Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. And my name is Peter. Hello Peter. Hello. This is our first proper show of 2020. Yes it is. 2020. 2020. We did one uh, last week as usual but it was um, Game of the Year. Yeah. Special. Game of the Year for 2019. If you haven't listened to that yet or watched it Mm. and you want to know what the patron voted Game of the Year is... And our own personal ones, too. And our own personal ones, too. Then that's how you can find out. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and and watch that. (laughs) Just go and watch it, you lunatics. Watch it. Peter, we have a sponsor this week. We do. For the podcast, as we do every week. Uh, These fine sponsors, totally legitimate, uh, very well-paying sponsors. Wholesome ethical companies. Yes. Uh, This week, we're sponsored by Umbrella Corporation. Okay. Pharmaceutical uh, giant. We all love farms. We all do love farms, yeah. Um, they, uh, they, they've they asked us to plug their, their third product that they've just recently brought out. Okay. Um, in the past, they've done an excellent hemorrhoid cream. Yes. Um, a, I'm a big fan of that one. Yeah, a really good herpes treatment, which I can attest to being wow. a miracle worker. Yeah, yeah. Um, this third one uh, that they brought out, uh, it's called... Um, idiot Cream. No, no, it's not. Oh, okay, I'm still waiting for that one. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, that might be the fourth the fourth product. Okay, I'm It's waiting. part of the Resident Evil brand. I do like that one. Yeah? Yeah. Um, it's, so this, this, this new product that's come out, it's Resident Evil 3 uh, d- uh, n- Never Cyst. Resident Evil 3 Never Cyst. Okay. Um, do you have a problem getting cysts all the time? Always. Yeah? Always. Just use get a bit of the Resident Evil 3 Never Cyst cream. Mm-hmm. Um, pop it on the the area where you get your cysts. Yeah. Maybe around sort of your big horsey teeth. Your big old your, horse teeth. Or your sort of wrist, your wrist willy. Yeah. I'm sorry? You, you, you know, from the game, he's got that weird... The wrist willy. Flesh fine. And when it when it works on it, yeah. you're the never cyst cream, yeah. you can go, oh, that umbrella corporation, aren't they just a bunch of stars? Stars. Yes, you can. You can. And you can Wonderful. say to yourself... Look, I, I I sometimes get medical ailments, but never cysts. Yeah, never exactly. Cysts. It's not going to stop me from living my life. And here's a here's a montage of me sort of skipping through fields, eating and salad, eating salad, mm. and there's the the sun is shining, and I kiss my my uh, sort of elderly wife yeah. on the forehead, and we smile, and we just sort of sail off into that. We own a boat as well in this your, montage. Push your grandchild on a swing. Push your grandchild off a swing. Off a swing. Off a swing. Oh, into the into like some kind of big lake into with sharks in it. Motor of your boat. Yes. Yeah. And then there's sort of, but everyone's still happy because the side effects of never cyst are, of course, hallucinations. Hallucinations. Yeah. But that's not real, isn't it? The oh. side effects are actually zombification and death because that's not a real sponsor, and Peter. Cysts. And sorry, and and cysts. Loads of never cysts. cysts. It causes cysts. Yeah. Uh, the real sponsor for this show, as it, as is the sponsor every week, mm. are the wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you support us at any tier, including one dollar, we've seen a real uptick over the Christmas break of people joining us, hopping on patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. We're and quick on the uptick. We're, yes. And and that's that's fantastic because it means that all of those people can submit questions for the podcast. Mm. Of course, there are other tiers available that we'll talk about at the end of the show uh, where you get different rewards like worse games ever early but just one dollar or however much you're willing to give uh, gives you access to the weekly podcast posts and you just need to leave your podcast in the comment of your podcast your question in the comments below not not however much you're willing is there a one dollar minimum on patreon well yeah it's one dollar minimum 99 cents no i think it's one dollar is the minimum okay well in that case you are absolutely right and i i retract this seems this seems like a weird thing to to sort of pick a hole in right now petty (laughs) it's really petty speaking of petty people Mm -hmm. Ern arrowsmith (gasps) was so sick of not being married to jess that he just went ahead and married Jess. Revolting. Really disgusting. Hope you're married. Hope you're married. Uh, they, they were Hope both, you're not married. They were, both, they were both big fans of idiots and also uh, they both watch Triple Jump as well. So we just want to wish them a, a very a very congratulations, happy merry wedding. Welcome to the world, Jess Arrowsmith. Yes. You sound a bit less like a Lord of the Rings character. Jess Arrowsmith. Than Ern Arrowsmith, but 
Uh, yeah, Jasaro Smith sounds a bit more. Jasaro like, Smith. Yeah. It's very exciting. Congratulations, Congra- guys. Congrats to Lions. Congrats to Lions. We've got our first question here, Peter, from... Please, please call your child triple jump. Carry on. That's okay. I got halfway through that sentence before you needed to add that. Well, because we were nearly... We, you were moving away rapidly. I was <laughs> you like, had to quick. flag the bus down. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> question one comes from Harold Bobbert Hawking, which is a great name. Harold Bobbert Hawking. Would you like to tell us what Harold has to say? Harald. Uh, Harold. Good English name, Harold. Bobbert is the best name. Yes, uh, I do uh, like Bobbert. As a young'un, I grew up around the corner from a video rental store that occasionally sold video games. My brother bought God of War, I think number two, but I don't remember for sure. And around 10 minutes in, a cutscene saw Kratos stab an enemy in the chest and pull up, tearing the enemy in half, Mm. to which my mum promptly forced my brother to return the game to the video store immediately. I was wondering if there was ever a game that one of your parents wouldn't let you play. Uh, no, I don't know if you were like me, Peter, mm. in that you were always in awe. I mean, you had you had cool video game uncle I did. next door. Yeah. So maybe it's slightly different for you, but I is. I was never allowed to play the some certain games. Right. My parents were quite strict about what I was and wasn't allowed to play in that they wouldn't they weren't well informed but they certainly you know I wasn't in a position as a child to buy my own games mm. so when I went to go and buy a game they were with me because yeah. how else was I going to get to town right uh so I couldn't really do certain things. I've got a whole thing here about GTA, but what were your parents like in regards to games? Well, yeah, my... I mean, you had Resident Evil. You told an anecdote about grandma letting you play Resident Evil 4. Well, yeah, but I was like 13. Yeah. Or 14. But, yeah. Uh, I, so, yeah, I did have a cool video game uncle who was probably about our age now when I was... It's a cool age. Yeah, like very cool age. six or seven. And, uh, yeah, I would I would go around to his and play... Some pretty violent, scary video games. Um, I remember, I think I've talked about it before, Duke Nukem Time to Kill, which is not necessarily one of the Sa- better Duke sounds Nukem Sounds violent. But it sounds violent. And uh, there was a deathmatch mode in that that we would play. It was sort of my initiation into deathmatch. And um, there was a mechanic in that game where if you killed each other with anything explosive, you would just get completely gibbed. Like your body would break into bits that had blood coming out of them. You would, like, get smeared up the wall. Obviously, this was, like, PlayStation graphics, but it was... It seemed semi-dynamic. It wasn't just, like, a stock animation splat. It was, like, I think actual bits of you would go in different directions. Wow. Um, I remember that quite vividly, and it didn't really bother me very much. Uh, But basically, if I wanted to... Any scary or violent game that I played up until about the age of... 11 or 12 mm. I would have to go next door to my uncles and play it there right. and he, there was very much an idea of don't tell your dad that we're playing this game um, okay <laughs> but I you know I knew full well that like I couldn't have GTA for example I think my parents also weren't that well informed but they'd probably heard about one or two games on the news right um, actually you no know, I say that we had GTA we had one of the top down GTA games on our PC okay um wh- I, when I was like eight or nine, but they're like not so violent. I think they do technically have blood in them when you run people over, but it's so low res. You just not... detached from it all. It's like running over ants. Yeah, exactly. But um, no, they they wouldn't have let me play like GTA three until I was, you know, until later on in life. Mm. Um, but then when you hit twelve, they were like, yeah, now now's the time. Yeah, well, I get I him had on it. get him on it. At about age twelve, I had GTA three. I had Resident Evil four. Uh, I'm trying to think if I had anything else, but yeah, yeah, not not so bad really. It's mind blowing yeah. to me. GTA was the big one I wasn't allowed. Mm-hmm. Um, but my my Until about what age do you think? Well, I'm I'm going to get there. Oh, right, this okay. is a whole journey, right? My uh, my cousin did have the GTAs, mm-hmm. and you know he had the he had the like the I, I, I'm going to make it go. I'm, we're going to go a bit blue now. Are you ready? Oh yeah. He had the he had like the, uh, the uh, porn, pornographic posters up on the wall. And stuff. <gasps> yeah, it was very. What? It's tried a transformative experience visiting my cousin's house. He's oh, only a year oh older God. than me, yeah. um, and so I used to go there. And he had he was allowed GTA. Uh, do you mean is this set, do you mean GTA pornographic posters? Or no, he just had actual pornographic. Just had posters? actual. Okay. Just, you know, just uh, lady chests and such. Why not? You know, yeah. posing around cars because apparently that's what the girls go wild for. Yeah. 
vehicles. They do. They love to sit on cars naked and hay bales. The hay bales are particular are a particular favourite of women. I yeah. must. I mu- all women. I must say all women. Strangely, not planes. What yeah, sitting on that? planes? Sitting on planes. Well, it's can't difficult, really do that, isn't it? They're, they're quite high, aren't they? Yeah. Imagine sitting on the wing of a Boeing seven four seven. Need a special sexy ladder to get up. Need there. loads of hay bales to climb up. Anyway, the point is yes. that my cousin was allowed cool adult things when we were in our early teens, mm-hmm. and I wasn't. And so I used to go there and watch him play San Andreas and uh, Vice City, and I was just in absolute awe. I never wanted to play it. I just wanted to watch it. Mm-hmm. Until I reached the point where I did want to play it. And then we discovered that GTA San Andreas had split screen um, that you could... Well, it wasn't really split screen. It had, like, co-op at certain areas. And you could load in. I don't even remember that. But there was it wasn't split screen. So you, it was sort of like the early Lego games where you had to stay right. on the same screen. So the camera was almost impossible to follow. Mm-hmm. And then when we inevitably both wanted to be in jetpacks and fly around, it was practically unplayable. Yeah. Because it was just the pulling the camera in so many different Trying directions, it couldn't do it. Jetpack. Um, so what I eventually did when I properly got into games and started reading magazines and stuff, I was very excited for GTA 4 on PS3. Mm-hmm. And um, I couldn't buy it myself. And I couldn't, you know, I, as far as I was concerned, I still wasn't allowed to play it. Right. And uh, and so what I did is I got my, when my friend pre-ordered it, I gave him the money and got his parents to pre-order it for me as well. Wow. So. Well, and they knew that they were pre-ordering it for you. Basically, yeah. I, th- I don't think they were that fast. You know, some parents are very hands-off. Yeah. And it's uh, Quite a ch- quite different, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Quiet phone. Oh, excuse me. Hello. It's not normally even got sound. Is that your is that your it? cool grandma saying? Do you want to play some more Resi Resi Four tonight? Yeah. Um, yeah. So he pre-ordered it for me and then brought it in and gave it to me and then I just sort of started playing it at home and from that point on it just sort of became normalized and I think my parents kind of gave up. Yeah. They never said a word about it. But I remember the turning point being when I got my first debit card mm-hmm. and I could buy things on the internet. Yeah. And I remember going on play.com and just pre-ordering a load of 18 rated games. I was like, this is it. I'm not even 18. I'm 16. I've got a debit card. Look at me. I can buy things online. This is it. I've got around the system. There's no way that anybody can ever catch me out for this. I don't know where I got my copies of GTA. I know, as I say, Resi was a gift, but I don't know where I got GTA 3 because that is an 18, I think. Probably, right? My parents, They're all 18. Yeah, they? my parents would not have bought that for me. I think they just tolerate, like, I just acquired games and they tolerated the fact that I had GTA now. Right. Um, I don't know if I would have got it. I did have another uncle who had a PS2 and would he would occasionally just give me his games when he was done with them. So I okay. may have got, got it from him. But uh, G- uh, Which one? GTA, GTA 3. 3. Right. Yeah. So that is a 3D one with prostitutes in it. That's that you, the first 3D one. Yeah. Um... So yeah, I, I think I may have just been given that one um, from an an adult. Mm. Uh, but yeah, yeah, not sure. There we go. It's always, I mean, unless you live in a very cool household, it always it's always sort of seems to be a coming of age thing for a lot of people who enjoy games. Mm. Sort of the the day you remember being able to actually buy adult games yeah, uh, and also getting away with playing games you shouldn't have mm-hmm. when you were younger on. And as I've spoken about before, horror games I didn't want to go near. But the, the games where you run over the prostitutes in the cars... Yeah, get the money wanted, back. Yeah, I wanted to play that. Great. That sounds like great fun. Mm. Thank you very much for that question, Harold. Let's move on to a brand new section. It's brand new for 2020. Yeah. Never done it before. Okay. Seriously. No one has ever done it before. No. And if they say they have... They're telling a big stinky lie right in your right in your silly gullible face. They're lying. They're lying yeah, to you. Lying here. What is it, Peter? It's called. Oh, it's oh. a bit weird. Yeah, the the fluffy muffs on the microphones. They're just they've been just been spit on for years. It's called what we play in. It's time for what we. What we play in. Mm-hmm. I nearly called it something else there. That would have been copyright infringement. We've trademarked this. We haven't. I played a lot because we didn't do... This is basically the first what we play and we've done of 2020 since the last show in mid-December. It is. If you'd asked me last week, I would have said nothing because I didn't play anything over Christmas. Chrism. I didn't take my console with me, so, you know. Inconsolable. But you you did have access to two consoles, didn't you? 
You took your s switch. I took the switch, and, and I took the puss. And then you also came and back, yeah, back here bef long before we. Uh, yes, got I, back I, to work, I came so. back up to Newcastle pretty much as soon as I could get away with coming back up to Newcastle. Hit me with a list of things you played. Are you ready? Yes. I played, and this includes the last week as well, actually. I played Borderlands 3 last night because they've balanced the Maluan takedown event that they've added in. This is a proper live service thing uh, where it's just a, a really, really hard end game raid, basically. Right. And it's stupidly difficult, and it's just not very fun. So I didn't uh, didn't finish it again. Got further than I did when it first came out, because, as I said, apparently they balanced it. And mm -hmm. it's weird. They said it will remain balanced until the end of January. I'm I don't know if... to unbalance it. I don't know if the event then goes away or what, but it's just... They've, they've been doing lots of tweaks to character builds again, and I don't know why, because, mm -hmm. as we've spoken about before, they've... They, they said that they don't want to, unless it actively inhibits other players' enjoyment of the game, which, you know, these things don't, mm -hmm. then then they wouldn't touch it. But it seems that that's all their priority is, is just sort of buffing and debuffing certain builds and characters and skills and stuff. So I just feel, I don't know, it's difficult to find a good build that you like, because as soon as you get one that yeah. you feel is strong, it gets debuffed and it's That's not even versus multiplayer so it doesn't it doesn't hurt anybody yeah so it's really annoying and i just wish that you know that they they would kind of leave it alone and just balance the game <laughs> in accordance but anyway so I, I gave up on that not gonna probably not gonna finish that oh, okay um but it's going to remain balanced until till the end of i don't know if that means the event's ending said. or if they're just unbalanced yeah. i don't know i don't know anyway uh after party i spoke about that on the yes. On the Game of the Year show. Mm. Fantastic game. Really, really enjoyed that. I think I'm going to go back to it again soon. I've got The Outer Worlds, which was also one of my favorite games of last year. Mm -hmm. I am two trophies away from the platinum in that. You've been streaming it, haven't you? I have. Yeah. I need to finish it on Supernova difficulty. Oh. And then I'll unlock the trophy for hard as well. And that's the last trophy I need is to finish the game on the Supernova difficulty, which is, as it turns out... Really bloody hard. That's why it's called Supernova. Yeah, I it's got not called piss easy mode. No, piss easy. Piss easy. I got Adam piss easy. I got a a uh, a companion. I got two companions mm -hmm. uh, in separate points in the game. They both lasted about a minute. Ah, oh. because there's permadeath with companions on Supernova difficulty. Oh, no. So they they both just sort of had a fall and then didn't get up ever again oh. and took my gear with them, which was really re just so sweet. I loved that. Uh, Alien Isolation. Oh. I played for the first time over the weekend. Not too spookums for you. Well, I was extremely drunk. Right. And I wasn't really playing it properly. Mm -hmm. But it's a very good looking game. Yeah. And I'm sure if you play it properly, it's very good. Mm -hmm. I, but I didn't play it properly. So at some point, I'll probably, I might play it properly. But I don't know. You thought, if I play this with enough tongue in my cheek, yes. I won't be scared. I'm overflowing with tongue, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. There was too, too much tongue. Uh, Modern Warfare, the new Call of Duty game. Yes. Played that, by which I mean I've just played the campaign. Really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Goodness me, it's it's very uh, very realistic in that it doesn't seem too overblown or far-fetched. It feels sort of very grounded in reality and quite real at times in a way that's a bit unsettling. Yeah, I've heard it described as edgy. Um, yeah, in that reality is edgy, I suppose. Well, yeah, like, <laughs> I guess gritty is a better word, but edgy was is a word I've heard used. Uh, I've not really seen much about it, this this latest one, but uh, mm. yeah, I'm, I've heard that it sort of pushes a few boundaries. It does. I guess. Which I is saying something for Call of Duty, given that, you know, there was that one where you shoot up an airport. Yes, um, but it felt almost cartoonishly violent. That yeah, no, exactly. But this is this in a different way. Has you opting in or opting out of of uh, sort of torturing someone right. in, in quite an unpleasant way. So it's, I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that the performance of Captain Price in particular is is astonishingly good in my opinion. It's a it's a gorgeous game in that the the facial capture and performance capture is really impressive, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it has a mission in there that rivals my favorite mission, as is the favorite mission of a lot of people from the original Modern Warfare, all gillied up. Mm -hmm. In this one, it's called Going Dark. Okay. And you have to sort of sneak your way around a compound and interrogate uh, 
but it felt felt a bit of Metal Gear Solid, to be honest. Oh, you had to interrogate stuff. various people and sneak about, and you had Captain Price providing Overwatch. And if you didn't do like if you didn't spot someone on your left or whatever, you just hear a thing, and then you, he'd snipe someone for you, and then just go, "Got that guy? You missed him on the left." Oh, nice. And I was like, "That's cool. This is cool. I feel like a real, I mean, a bad soldier because yeah. I didn't see him, but it's cool." I thought it was a really fun mission, and uh, I, the, you know, the game's like six hours long, but. Uh, uh, I would like some more, please. Right. I thought it was very good. As as uh, Oliver Twist said, I would like some more, please. I would like some more, please. More? More. Yeah, I would. Okay. Please provide more for me. You want more? Yes. Here's some more. Thanks. Resident Evil 5. I played through that for the first time to completion in co-op. Is it good? No. No. <laughs> it's uh thing is I prefer Resident Evil 6 which I've also started playing through mm-hmm. uh, which I've played before. Um just because it's that level of bad mm. in terms of the game isn't the game itself isn't bad it doesn't like stutter or it doesn't control poorly. Um it's but just it's, it's not it's the death of survival horror basically. Yeah. But it's uh Resi 6 doesn't have that horrible sort of brown filter over it yeah the piss filter which a lot of people called it um it is just sort of yellow brown and tones yeah. in between mostly on uh, resi 5 it's 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 not the nicest game to look at no but then you've also got the fact that they've sort of carried over the the clunky tanky controls from resi 4 while moving in a more action direction mm. so it can at times feel really unwieldy to control um, just when there's a lot going on. Yeah. Whereas Resi 6, it's really refined and it just feels like a third-person shooter. Mm-hmm. Resi 6 plays really well. It's just a dreadful Resident Evil game. Yeah. Uh, so I've been playing those two as well, and I'm glad I finished Resi 5 because that's one ticked off. I've now done Resi 1, 2, 5, and 6. Oh, nice. So I, I, I've, I'm, I'm slowly getting through them. But not 7. No, absolutely not really 7. Scary no, one. absolutely not 7. But In there we VR. go. That's pretty much my my big old stack of games that I played. Okay. The thing that I remember most about... I've not played Resi 6, um, but I'm aware that there's a bit inside a sort of parking lot, like a low multi-story car park, low ceilinged one, and there's a bus on its side. The double decker bus on its side. That if it was standing up, it wouldn't have been able to fit inside the yeah. building. It's so it, someone has slid it in on its side. That's my favorite part of that game. Yeah. It's the, it's the double decker bus in the multi-story car park. <laughs> how did it how did it get in there? I don't know. They built it in there. Zombies. Yeah. yeah. If you build it, they will come. Um well, I've been playing a little bit of gameage. As I said, I didn't play anything over Christmas. Then we came back and we did, fortunately, did a podcast where I didn't have to talk about what I played. Between now and then, I've played the game that I streamed and I played a game that I'm currently streaming and we also recorded some content on it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and other than that, th- there's just been like maintenance issues at my flat that <laughs> I have just like made me not really want to sit down and play a game. Mm. Um but we'll get into that on Polyos or something. Yeah. Uh, but so yes, we finished Little Inferno. I finished that on um, on stream. Mm-hmm. That has like a, a wild, weird ending uh, where you know the entire game takes place with you looking at just a square where you're just burning stuff inside this on a shelf, effectively. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, I mean, spoilers for a game that's several years old. Are you you're about to break my heart. I am about spoilers. to break your heart. Yeah. Okay. Um, you end up burning four things together, four special items, which causes like your entire house to burn down. And then suddenly, for the last ten minutes of the game, it's a side scroller, and you're this like little boy wandering through the streets, talking to people, going, "My house burned down. What am I gonna do?" And you like head to the company who provided the furnace to That's like so make weird. a complaint. Yeah, and it's really like. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's, I was going to say artsy. It's not really artsy. It's uh, got a strange kind edgy. of... No, not edgy. It's not edgy at all. Edgy. Um, Is there a torture scene in it? Oh, if only. That would have really made it a, a, an A++ game for me. Does it transition smoothly into the beginning of Little Nightmares? Well, it's that kind of thing is what I'm... It, unsettling. It, yeah, it's got a weird unsettlingness to it. Um, but... Uh, at the same time, kind of enjoyable. It's like, have you seen um, Edward Scissorhands? No, but I'm familiar. 
Right. Well, with, right at the end of the Edward Scissorhands, there's this shot of him uh, in his... He goes into this old mansion on the hill and he's on his own and he's just like carving this ice sculpture and there's this weird like choral soundtrack just going and it's just him like making snow as it like cascades down the hill and it's that Mm. weird sort of I know he's a good guy and he's not going to get me but I'm also a bit scared of him yeah I also wish that he wouldn't come out of the mansion ever again yeah it would be easier for me in my life if I never had to see him again and that's exactly what the end of Little Little Inferno is is that Mm. everyone around you and your player character is like largely quite friendly Yep. but still weirdly unsettling in in a strange way. Um, other than that, Rosie 4, at time of <sighs> release of this podcast, Ooh. I streamed that at the end of the week. Yeah, you um, did. Did you have fun? I don't know, because at time of recording, I've not done the stream, but, but. we have played it for an undisclosed video that's coming up. Mm. Played the first little bit of it. God, I really like that game. But yeah. the HD version yeah. on PS4, yeah. the controls are markedly different to what they were on Help Gromit. 2. Help Gromit. There's, what have you actually done with the controls? You've really flip-flopped up the controls. So that's taken some getting used to. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, love that game. You love had a great story, time. Love the setting. Love the spooky. I like the part of your stream where you did a flip. Yeah. You Good. want to see Peter do a flip? I mean, you can actually sort of do a flip when you jump out of a first floor window. You can. I mean, he's just, he's very extra, isn't he, Leon Kennedy? Leon, yeah. All he could the just time. sort of carefully descend. Nah. But no. Nah. Do a flip. Twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. If you would like to see our VODs, they're up there for 14 days. So that's uh, two, that's that's one and one week, in case you couldn't it do is. the mathematics. It's half of two fortnights <laughs> there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. So, if you would like to uh, catch up on the VODs week to week, make sure you go there, twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump. They're archived there. You can watch them in full. I believe there is a, an app available for Twitch on most uh, sort of home consoles and devices if you watch them on your TV. Uh, and you should be able to access them through that and TV. watch them back because we're no longer uploading them to YouTube, apart from the Thursday streams. Or which will go on YouTube. Because that's where they are anyway. Yeah, they ju- we just stick them back on. Unless it's heavy rain, in which case they shove it full of licensed music and we have to cut about half of it out the because it gets copyright struck. Of drunk people falling around the room. Yeah, going to the dance club and dancing. doing a dance. Basically, whenever there's dance music, David Cage has picked the worst music he could possibly find. And we even remark, like, this music's bad. I bet we get content ID'd for yeah. it. And we do, every time. Every so then time. we have to take it down, edit it out, put it back up. Then it finds another piece of music, yeah. which it couldn't find the first time. Take it down, put it back. It's a nightmare. It's like they didn't design Heavy Rain to be streamed in 2000 and whatever it was. Every time. Every time. It happens like this if you cry every time. Every Tim. Ever, ever Tim. Blimey. Well, it's time to move on yeah. to the next question. This question yes. comes from Alexander Waldron. Ooh. That's a good name. Would you like to read it, Ben? It's your turn. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's not. I did the... Did I? No, yeah, said, no, I did. You said the guy's name, but and then yeah. I read the question. Oh, wow. We're just sort of... We're just tag teaming this thing. Yeah. Right? We're just handing it back like, like a baton. 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 Gentlemen. Long time follower. First time interact... Uh, I've been a fan of yours since the name Red Red Undead Days. The question, I'm curious, is there an item of food or drink from video games that you wish was real? Personally, I would like to try a Skyrim sweet roll. After all, anything that warrants a crime spree must be good, right? (laughs) Keep up the excellent work. (laughs) Alexander, thank you, Alexander. Sorry I made you sound like like an idiot. That was my fault. Keep up the excellent work. (laughs) That's what it says there. (laughs) Someone stole your sweet roll. Well, both of us have tried a sweet roll. Got to say. Yeah. Not that great, Alexander. Uh, The icing was all right, but I think I would have just preferred a spoonful of icing. Yeah, it was very buttery, wasn't it? (laughs) Uh, We put a bit too much butter in it. Mm. We should obviously take the opportunity to plug a show that we do called Main Menu, where we recreate video game foods to the very best of our ability. Yeah, which is not... Not to the very best standards, just to the very best of our ability. Yeah, it's it's a very low bar to clear, and yeah. somehow we 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 do not clear it. No, a, a, at any point, ever time. Um, In fact, at the time of recording, at the time of release, we recorded a couple of episodes yesterday. Yeah, uh, which will be sprinkled out in the next couple of months. So. Sprinkled, like sprinkled, like garnish at the end of a lovely main menu. Yes, uh, like garlic dish. at the end of like the, garlic, like an extra fifties worth of garnish. Garlic and chips. Um, video game foods. 
I mean, if you'd asked me about sort of animated TV foods, I would have given you a list as long as my... How long my tongue is hanging out thinking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pizza oh. and all the other things. Uh, but I got a fair few fair few gaming ones too. You got a fair few gaming ones? Thought it could start start healthy, have some fruit. Um, That's bad. It is bad. But... <sighs> I find that video game fruit in any game that is remotely stylized and non, not just photorealistic, just looks so juicy and brightly colored and fresh. You're talking about the Wumpers? Wumpers is one of them, yeah. Okay. Wumper fruits look delicious and very, they've got a lot of flesh on them, Wumper fruits. Yeah. There's a lot to a Wumper fruit. I like to think that there's a really, an equally big core inside with loads of pips. So it's just a really thin skin around yeah, a massive it's, it's core. it's deceptive. It's a very disappointing fruit. But even the noise it makes when he picks it up, it's like... Oh, just, yeah, it's a different one. Sounds like a nice big mouthful of peach or something. <laughs> delicious. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Wumper fruits. Uh, fruit Ninja... They're all very juicy fruits, mm. aren't they, on your phone? That's true. They look really good. Yeah. Um, but also, mm. are you aware of Net Your Rose? Yeah, that's the... The PlayStation dev kit. Yeah, that's the that's the sort of consumer dev kit people could buy for the PS1. It was yeah. really cool. It was a black PS1. And they used to release uh, little um, like mini game, indie game things that people have made on demo discs mm. from like PlayStation Magazine or something. Um there was a Net Your Rosie game that's like fairly popular on the Net Your Rosie scene <laughs> uh, called Blitter Boy. It was this sort of like, not isometric, but like third person, top down sort of view of this little boy. And all he does is he walks around an arena and shoots ghosts, right? Okay. But now and then new weapons drop in. And there was a weapon that dropped in where you fire, it's a very cartoony looking game. You fire these little multicolored blobs. And whenever a blob hits a ghost, a giant fruit plops down and goes like bloop, onto the ghost. And you can actually walk over to the fruit and pick it up. And I don't think anything happens. It just oh, okay. disappears. But it was the biggest, most colorful, juicy cartoon fruit mm. ever. Mm. It looked so good. It made me want to be healthy. Did it? But then I'm going to immediately eat a Sims 1 pizza. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then just because I've not had enough cheese as a lactose intolerant person. Yep. Screw your sweet rolls. I want a Skyrim cheese wheel. Oh, that's a very good point. Big yellow cheese. So much cheese. More cheese than I know what to do with. How many? Bearing in mind the size of the cheese wheel, mm. and we know that that's at least that's at least four or five of you stacked on top of each other for, oh, a, yeah. for, a, for a Skyrim cheese wheel. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just thinking. I'm just trying to picture in my head how many how many packs of Jacob's cream crackers would it take. Oh. To actually get through that, if you were having reasonable, reasonable amounts of the cheese wheel on each cracker, I thought you were going to say if you're having reasonable trips to the toilet. Yeah, having <laughs> if you, if you were eating it on, you might as well just cut out the middleman and eat it on the toilet. Yeah, might as well just put it down the toilet. Might as well just flush it. In fact, just throw it away. Uh, but, but if you've got your crackers yeah. and you're having a reasonable amount on each one, it's it's crimis. The, the biscuit box has come out. The I cheese really, and biscuit box. You're has making come out. this sound way even nicer. It wasn't. Now it started out just the cheese wheel, but, but how, now Jacob's cream crackers. Because now I'm just picturing in my head I remember there's a scene isn't there from Wallace and Gromit where he opens his cupboards and it's full of yeah. those those Crackers. iconic orange and and black diamond yeah. Sort of decorated crack. He's just got a whole cupboard full of crackers he and has. I think that's what you need to tackle a Skyrim cheese wheel. You do. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many. That many. What kind of cheese do you think it is? It's I mean it's yellow and it it's quite hard. Is it an Edam? I think it could be it could be a sort of an edam or a cheddar, it, like one of those good one of the good cheeses, mm. you know, not one of the ones that has like little dead flies in it or whatever they are. Yeah, you know, the blue bits. Varicose vein cheese. Yeah, uh, not not one of those, and not no. a soft one either. It's like a a good a good cheese, British hard cheese. Well, I do like I do like the Dutch cheese as well. Yeah, me and too. The, well, the sort of you know the Germanic cheeses. You know, in fact, I do like most cheeses. I don't I, like I, the, I do as well. I like brie and I, and I mm. like um and uh, what's the other one? The one that's like brie that's not brie. Um, you know, you know the type. It's it's a soft cheese. It's got a, it's got the rind on it. You got to wait for it to ripen. There's brie and then there's the other one. Everyone's yelling at me. Camembert. Thank you. There it is. Um, so brie and camembert. I like mozzarella. The, I like obviously. I mean, I wouldn't just eat mozzarella. No, but, but yeah, mozzarella is fine. Um, my favorite though is is the Emmental and the and the 
edam and stuff, which are yeah. so, which are kind of a little bit flavorless, but I really like them. I think they're delicious. I really like Emmental, and I never get. I only ever get it when I'm in Europe. I only ever get can, it when I have diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you can obviously get it here very easily uh, in the supermarket, but. For some reason, we just don't in my family. But you then when we go to Germany or France just on holiday, pick it all up. Get all oh, we always have Emmental. Well, it's because they don't tend to have, or you get less cheddar there than you do. That's true. Over here. They have loads of different brands and supermarkets own brands. And it's all of Emmental and, and and Edam. Whereas in the UK, you have to buy it like Leerdama and or whatever. Yeah. And you have to buy brand. My brands. The one other thing about Skyrim cheese. What about that mammoth cheese? Ooh. Oh, I don't know about that. No, I'm, I'm it's the same saying. with goat cheese for me. I've never had it, but I'm I'm wary of it. Goat's cheese is nice. I quite like goat's cheese, but the mammoth cheese that sits in a big sort of sack in a giant's camp, oh. and it's it just oh. looks like it's sort of been melted, but no. not in a good way. No, no. And you pick it up, and you see the the water level go down in no. the sack. No, I don't. It like just it. goes. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like that. Mm. I don't like that. It makes the same noise that it makes in Crash Bandicoot when you pick up a wumper fruit. Yeah, but a squelchy. It's like the Wumper Fruit has been sitting on the beach for a while. Yeah, I don't like that. No, I, I agree. I, I really don't like that. I did enjoy our cheese conversation. That was totally irrelevant. Me too. It? I'm starving now. Uh, I, so I, hurry up. I'll make mine quick. <laughs> Any food from Final Fantasy 15? Oh, okay. That game. Have you seen the food from Final Fantasy 15? I've 15? seen that, little bits of it. Yeah, it's pra- it's just photorealistic. We're and all it, sitting it, around oh, together. It's so anything you cook. Is is so so good. I'm just gonna get up any Final Fantasy 15 food. You ready? Is that what you're going to happen to Google? Any Final Fantasy 15 food. 15 food. There we go. Here we go. Uh, images, images. We're getting there. Oh, I mean, I mean, look at those. Oh, oh, that look looks good. It. What is that supposed to be? Um, I don't even know, and I want it. It's some sort of meat based. It is just a meat thing. There's some greens with there. Some green, but. Good kind of greens. Yeah, that game made me really hungry because there is an actual, unlike most games, Mm -hmm. which either the only reason you pick up food is because they provide a very, very tiny health bonus. So you might as well just use regular healing items like Fallout or Skyrim or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I believe that, I can't even remember, it's been so long since I played it, but I think Final Fantasy 15, when you're, because the camp is so important because you need, that's where you level up and stuff. Mm -hmm. The food is equally important for like, morale and happiness and i think even xp i can't i can't quite remember but the amount of food i saw in that game and i was like i want to see what this one looks like yeah oh now i'm hungry i'm never gonna have that time to order a pizza <laughs> uh yeah any food from that game they went they went hard with the with the food designs in they there. went ham they did go ham and every and other all variety the, all of the other meat. meats yeah great <sighs> oh, well I can't believe we talked about cheese for so long. I'm that was a little bit. Um, have some water to fill my stomach. That was a little bit uh, um, weird, weird armor, wasn't it? <laughs> but weird armor. You mean like sometimes, sometimes the news is a bit weird armor. It's weird news. <laughs> weird. Yeah. Peter, it's weird news time. I can confirm. This just in. It's weird news time. Is it? Is it weird? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to go first? Uh, yeah, I really, I really want to go. F- Please, can I go first? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jedi Fallen Order patch nerfs photo mode. <laughs> Are we all aware of the verb nerf? It's to, you know, D de- yeah. de- power. D de- good. D de- good it. Yeah. Uh, the subtitle is, yes, you read that right. Okay. Uh, this is from Owen's Good. Ah, oh, love that guy. Yeah, Owen's not been D de- gooded yet. Uh, a nifty but unintentional power has been nerfed out of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order with the game's latest patch. That's right. You can no longer destroy rockets using the game's photo mode. <laughs> Were you aware of this? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't aware. Until this, it was nerfed out of the game. Shortly after photo mode was patched into the game on the 11th of December, players discovered a useful exploit. When an enemy fires a rocket at Cal, going into photo mode mid-flight and running the camera over the rocket will blow it up. (laughs) Some likened this to an extension of Cal's ability to force manipulate rockets, but nah, ain't supposed to work like that. Uh, And then there's a gif here of... Okay, I see it. It's, All right, he's, so he's, he's frozen it. Frozen it. He's gone into photo mode. He flies yeah. over to the rocket. Boom. I'm assuming, like, gone. in video game development terms, I'm assuming it's because the camera is 
is the thing that has the collision, right? It, I suppose. It's, it's an extension of the collision there. So when you're moving it, if it hits something, it counts as you being hit. Yeah, but in, in, in most game photo modes, I imagine that no. the photo camera doesn't have collision. But Absolutely they not. Accidentally, or it's either collision or it just has some sort of entity within it that says, I am Cal, this is Cal's location. And so the moment that the rocket touches, quote unquote, Cal, <sighs> it blows up. God, okay. Um, photo modes camera also needed a fix because it could interact with trigger volumes within the levels that could potentially break the game. Oh. Respawn Entertainment wrote in the patch notes. We fixed this to ensure that you can continue playing the game after using photo mode. So what a treat! So again, I'm assuming it's because it's an extension of of Cal's body. You, you can over fly over a trigger that you're not meant to fly over yet if you don't have a power, for example. Yeah, and then potentially trigger a, a portion of the game that you can't, you're not meant to access, and mm -hmm. just absolutely break it. Yeah, sounds like that. I oh, think that's dear. what happened. There are several other bug fixes in the latest patch for Jedi Fallen Order. Also of note. The orange lightsaber pre-order exclusive has now been unlocked for all players. Oh. Which, I mean, I I didn't buy that. I didn't pre-order it, so that's didn't, good for me. Didn't know there was an orange lightsaber option. Yeah, there were there were a couple of uh, pre-order bonuses. Can you have a red one? No. That's not fun, is it? There's like a special kind of uh, hilt and stuff, which I don't know if that's been unlocked. But orange saber was like one of the pre-order bonuses. And if I'd like paid money for that hmm. I might be a little bit annoyed that it's now available for everyone yeah especially um, if you're only well, thinking like, especially when it's marketed as an, as an exclusive I'm sure it probably said in the terms and conditions like this will probably be made available later for everybody yeah as long as it was a pre-order bonus rather than a pre-order exclusive I feel like that's that's a little different I feel it? like the word exclusive was just used in that article hmm yeah I wouldn't be necessarily be too happy also of note the orange lightsaber pre-order exclusive has now been unlocked for all players great that seems a little okay. bit dodge but anyway well, there we go we'll move That's, on. that is weird yeah you can uh do things well you can no longer do things with photo mode um, <laughs> the photo mode is ridiculous in that game as well i've i've only used it twice and i've just taken two really unflattering shots <laughs> right, of, of cal, of cal like mid cal. combat yeah his weird combat face and his weird regular face i don't think it uh, had they added photo mode in, didn't? Uh, yeah, in December. I don't think it had photo mode when I was playing it. So oh, I'm not, really? I'm not even had to go with it. I yet. accidentally triggered it the first time, and it's got a spotlight mode, so you can shine an artificial spotlight on the front of frame. Oh, so you can just illuminate all of Cal in the darkness. It's <laughs> very weird. You can just get some very strange shots. I might use one of them actually as the thumbnail for the video. <laughs> Talking of very weird, yeah. Have you got a weird news? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this actually comes from Dan Lockie on Twitter. Oh. At Dan Lockie twenty five, who uh, who sent it to me. Uh, it's from Kotaku. Mm -hmm. Zach Zweizen. Is that how you'd pronounce that? Zach Zweizen. Yes, Nailed that is how it. I would pronounce that. Great name, Zach. Mm. ZZ. WWE 2K20 is having a rough New Year's Day. According to multiple reports from Reddit, Twitter, and YouTube, many people are unable to play the game now that it's 2020. Instead of working, the game just crashes when selecting most game modes, including online and career. Oh god, what? So this is this is obviously a slightly older one. Yeah. But essentially, as t due to a Y2K-like bug, WWE 2K20 say, like is that. almost unplayable in 2020. Unbelievable. I was, I was about to say, it sounds like the Millennium Bug. Yeah. Yes, if these reports are accurate, it sounds like WWE 2K20 is suffering from a Y2K-style bug. It seems that the game won't work properly if it detects the year 2020. Some folks are calling this bug Y2K20. Y2, Y2K20. Right. That was difficult to say. Yeah. Over on the WWE Games subreddit, players are sharing stories of how their game stopped working after midnight when parts <laughs> of the US started entering the new year. Someone has even released a short video showcasing the current state of the game in this new year. And it's quite funny, actually. It's just a guy going, oh, well, you know, new year. Maybe I'll play a bit of camp. Oh, it just freezes and crashes. OK, no, fair enough. Maybe I'll play. No, OK. Well, maybe I'll go look at the community creations. Oh, no. OK, uh. no. And it just crashes every time. 
There does seem to be a workaround at the moment for players who want to do some wrestling in 2020. Mike, also known as The Shining the Shining Down, who runs the WWE Supercard subreddit, has tweeted out a way to get around the Y2K20 bug. All you have to do is, can you guess? Change the date on your console. Set the date of your console back one day and then reset your game. That should, according to him and some others who tried it, fix the issue. After doing this, according to Mike, you should be able to set your date back to normal and play online without crashing. Oh. 2019 wasn't a great year for WWE 2K20. No. <laughs> the game was pummeled by most critics and fans, began, uh, and fans began sharing videos of how terrible some parts of the game looked across social media. 2020 seems to be going about as good so far for 2K20, and of course, 2K have now fixed the bug. How was that even a bug? Because I understand how Y2K worked. It's because all the year counters from stuff went from 99 yeah. up to either like 00, zero might have confused certain computers. Like, why is the year set to zero? Yeah. Uh, or 99 might have ticked over to 100, zero zero, which would have been fairly catastrophic, I imagine. Right. But 19 to 20... How how how, how is know. that a problem? I don't know. It's astonishing. The game just wasn't finished, was it? No. Uh, yeah. FIFA didn't have these issues. Other 2K series didn't have these issues, mm -hmm. like NHL and so on. Uh, it's just oh, the sorry saga. It's just it's a it's a whole Fallout 76 barrel of fish, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Incidentally, top tip for this year. Yeah. If you're ever writing the date out by hand on an important document. Don't just put slash 20 at the end. No. Because someone could put one nine on the end of that. If they wanted to mess with your document, they right. could turn 20 into 90. Into 20. 2000 and whatever, 2002. Oh, I see. So they could, they could add numbers, numbers on the, on the end, end of the of 20. Slash 20. Gotcha. I see. Well, I thought you meant it before. There. So it said it's a 1920. I was like, that would be a weird bit of vandalism How they squeeze, squeeze uh, well that I in. don't know that's what I was wondering no okay you're right make sure you write out the full date on your checks and everything because there's people around who want to change the year on yeah. your on your documents for some reason we call them date fiddlers yes and you've got to be careful look out for them it's time for question three yes it is as tradition dictates I'll read the name mm. this comes from Trevor Price thank you Trevor uh, hi Ben and Peter hello Hope you had many sandwiches over the festive period. Oh, I actually didn't. Did you have a turkey sandwich at any point? No, because we didn't have turkey this year at my house. What did you have? Just a big cheese with a big cheese with us. A big cheese with us. A big cheese with us. We did. Uh, we no, we had a, a ham. We had oh, ham. Oh, that's nice. A big gammon. A big gammon. Yeah. Mm, um, lovely. I had turkey and I didn't have a sandwich. Oh, oh that's a shame. Everybody ate it. Because <laughs> it was delicious. I do really love gammon, but I did I did Salty kind of miss, miss the white meat. Mm. Um, That's us. Anyway, never mind. White meat. My question is as follows. If a game allows its cosmetics to be bought via microtransactions, does this result in it losing its value? For example, earning a golden gun from uh, thousands of kills shows you're an ex that you're an experienced player. Uh, if it's available for money, though, uh, people uh, just assume you have daddy's, uh, daddy's credit card. I can't talk today. So, uh, I'm just thinking about of food. Us can. Yeah, cheese wheels and turkey. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think you're bang on. I think it absolutely does devalue having skins of any kind. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Because. Yes. Microtransactions are not very fun. Even if they're just cosmetic, mm -hmm. you know, people are still pay having to pay for things that really should be in the game for free. And if it's free to play, there's an argument to be made for that. But that's not the conversation that yeah. we're having today. However, if you go back to sort of early online shooters, and when I say early online, I mean console wise. So you're talking yeah. PS3, Xbox 360. Let's go back to Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, for mm -hmm. example. When somebody had a skin, it's because they worked very hard to get it. Yeah. And you could see someone had a golden colored skin on their gun and you thought wow that person's the real really odilio yeah it's like in halo they're very uh, cool halo 3 there was a an ability to get fire around your helmet and i think that was only unlockable through uh well that actually that might have been something to do with if you like worked with bungee or something but there were certainly like some crazy like transformer power ranger style helmets that you could get that were only unlockable through being good at the game see that that's cool and yeah. you see that and you think that person either is a very special person mm. or they've worked very hard to get that. Oh, how do I get that? Oh, I'm going to work towards something to to get such and such. However, when you introduce the ability to buy things, 
and I know it, you can still unlock stuff naturally. Yeah. There's no way of knowing now when you look at someone with a golden gun if they earned that legitimately or if they bought it. And it devalues, it absolutely devalues the work of the, the people who, who, who actually, you know, put in the hours to unlock something. I totally agree with that in the instances where you either have the choice of buying it or unlocking it through through skill. Like, definitely, uh, you know, that that is the case. Um, I think there are some games where things are only unlockable by purchasing it. Mm. Um, and I think in that case... It still, I think it has, it still has less value than than the the notion of like having a, a trophy piece of armor or a, or you know a cool skin or something yeah. from being good at the game. But at least if it's something where, all right, you see someone walking around with a big fancy golden gun that you can only buy, yeah, you're not going to look at them and go, wow, they must be really good at the game. Mm -hmm. But you can still at least just look at that gun and go, oh wow, that's that really expensive gun. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not going to be impressed that someone has either got daddy's credit card or earns more money than I do and has more expendable income. But I can still look at a thing and go, wow, that's nice. In the same way that if I see a sports car drive past me in the street, it can go, oh, wow, nice. Yeah. Um, but they, yeah. they must have worked really hard to unlock that. Yeah, exactly. How many kills did you get? <laughs> but uh, yeah, if, if it's something that can either be unlocked with money or with kills, you ne you then don't know, do you? You just see someone running around with a golden gun like, oh, yeah. what? But did you, hmm, okay. And you're right, that people who did unlock it with hard work, it totally devalues their work more than anything else. It's like, you know, they're, they worked so hard for that and then people look at them and think, oh, you probably just bought that, didn't you? Yeah. You bought that. So if it's in a game where there's a mixture of being able to unlock stuff and also being able to pay for currency, either to just buy it outright or get it in a loot box mm. then yeah it, it completely devalues it because you don't know what people earned and what people paid for yeah. if it's like you said in a game where you can only buy things then it's not so damaging because everyone's running around and able on a level playing field essentially yeah. uh however that you know there's there's a better way to do it i feel like if if they were, were insistent on doing the sort of loot box thing then why not set it so that because obviously if if there are no microtransactions and you can only un unlock skins in the game normally mm -hmm. uh, by working hard at it, then everyone's going to be wearing the same stuff and using the same stuff. Why not set it, if they want these loot box surprise mechanics in there, why not set it so that depending on the level you are in game, or even if you do buy the loot boxes, the, the potential random cosmetic rewards are tiered. Yeah. So you're only level five, so you, you can only get one of... 40 items mm. or you're only you've only got 40 kills with this gun so you're not going to get a skin for it yet. yeah uh, so that way you're you're still allowing people to buy them but they're gated depending on how hard they've worked towards the thing and there's variety in what skins people can have so yeah still, i feel like there's there's a middle ground to be reached but if if you are just straight up saying, I'd like the gold gun skin, I'll buy that. There's a guy running around with a red gun skin that he's earned in game, and I'm new to the game. I look at both of them and I think, well, you probably both paid for them. Yeah. I think it does It does sort of ruin it. Yeah. I think there, there probably are some games where it does limit like what you can unlock uh, from a crate like based on your level, but it's certainly not a standard. So, you know. Yeah. Also, I don't play online games anymore. So no, I, I, just, I, I just can't really be asked. Know, like, you know, let them, that, let them dab and running man and whatever, do the Carlton dance. The Harlem you know, Shake. The Harlem Shake. Not to be dismissive, of course, because some people really enjoy those games and it's how they unwind and all the power to you, but I just can't be asked. No. It, pretty much since the, the advent of all these skins and microtransactions, it's now just such a barrier for entry for me. Pretty I much, just can't be bothered to navigate it all. For me, it's since daddy took away his credit card. Yeah, me. no, me too, actually. Anymore. Since my parents took away my debit card when they found out I was buying naughty games yeah. online that I shouldn't have. You're going to have to get it's your friend's mum to buy you a yeah, golden gun Yeah, in Fortnite. to get Susan in. She'll yeah. buy it. Right. It is time, Peter, to mm -hmm. move on to a... Humashes of Gungus discussion. Gungus? A Hugh Gungus Discussion. It's big discussion time. It couldn't be any bit. Well, it could be bigger. We've we've done some bigger discussions, but it's a pretty big one. It's a pretty big one to kick off to kick off the year. With the first proper podcast of the year. Peter, who is it from? Ginny. And Ginny says, "Oh, 
Thanks for recycling with O2 Recycle. Your device has been processed and you'll be paid by the payment method you selected at the time of your order. Thank you, O2. You're welcome, Ginny. Thank you for... Uh, Is that what Ginny said to you? Yeah, Ginny just dropped Does me Ginny a message there. for O2? Yeah, it's O2 Ginny. Mm. Ginotu. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a Star Wars. Do you think? Ginotu. I think it sounds like a samurai. Oh, you think? Yeah. You think? I am Ginotu. Can we, should we just keep saying you think to each other? I think. You think? Mm. Mm, okay. Ginny. Ginny says, A friend and I have been debating who is going to win the next-gen console launch. We're both Sony supporters, but whereas he's not concerned about the PS5 launch and thinks they have it under control, I am slightly worried. Sony has been extremely reluctant to tell us anything, and they did go through a change of leadership last year, but Microsoft has shown us the Series X and seems to have been planning long in advance in terms of games with all of the studios they acquired. Now, I'm not expecting a Stadia-level disappointing launch, but I don't want Sony to go into this next-gen lagging behind. So, what do you boys think? Is Sony so confident that they don't feel the need to show the PS5 off, or are they not as ready for this launch? Can I just say that questions like that are poles apart from the people who say (laughs) every week, what's your favourite game ever that you've ever played? (laughs) We love all of our patrons. We do love (laughs) all of our patrons, but we have answered that question a thousand times. Yes, there's a good chance if you ask a question that that you don't think is like that, we have answered it in some form over the past nearly 50 episodes so mm. we don't we we repeat ourselves almost constantly anyway but yeah. if we've asked if we've if we've answered questions similar to that then we won't we won't go near them my point was less about those people but more more about those Ginny people. those people it was more about the fact that Ginny has put, put together a very good question there F- fantastical question well thought out now as we've both made clear as well we're sort of Sony boys too mm. um, or girls so it's been an interesting, I mean, it's such a weird thing, isn't it? Because both the consoles are launching at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. We've got the the, play, the PlayStation 5. We've got the Xbox Series X. The which, Xbox 6. The Xbox, which may or may not just be called the Xbox and the Series X is just the model that they're going to be launching with yeah. or the model they're talking about at the moment. But Microsoft hasn't clarified that yet. Because they're talking about not doing any sort of new gen games of their own at the moment right uh, or that well they're, they're basically not talking about next gen yet as such they're just saying you know there aren't going to be any like launch titles for it which mm. kind of implies that it's just another form of their current console well there will be launch titles but it's just that they're not i thought they said there wouldn't be any there's not going to be any exclusives on oh, it. Exclusives. so they're for the first year i think with xbox mm. they're any game that releases for Xbox Series X will be on Xbox yeah, One. No as generational well. exclusives. Yes, is what I mean. yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Um, so it's the, everyone's taking a very strange approach to this. Xbox are going to be at E3. Mm-hmm. Sony are not going to be at E3 again. So they've said it's very apparent that they've fallen out with the ESA, who organise E3 in some capacity. Because why wouldn't they go? Even though they've said we have the greatest respect for the ESA. Blah, blah, blah. They've said that they're going to be attending hundreds of consumer events across the globe instead. Yes. Which is a a little bit weird. But obviously they're going to have a big announcement soon to show off everything. Yeah, surely. Because they were at CES where they showed off the logo. That was worth staying up for. That was a fun watch. Yeah. For about five minutes. I'd rather go to CES, to be honest. (laughs) They did have a big change of leadership last year. It seems some people may have been forced out. Mm -hmm. They're not very... um, uh, sort of personality driven like they were at the beginning of the PS4 life cycle where they had, you know, the 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 head honchos were sort of their own personalities mm. who, who they'd bring out and people would know who they were, Shuhei Yoshida and stuff. They've sort of been brought back in and, and told to be quiet or something. Something's changed there. And do they sure. even need them if they're not going to be at E3? Well, that's it, right? Because they have they have sold a staggering number of PlayStation 4s. Yeah. They are absolutely the market leader right now. Mm. And they, people, this is this is the difficult thing to sort of be patient for. And I'm as guilty of it as everybody else. Is I want to know how much it's going to cost, what it looks like, and, and when I can buy one. Yeah. But they're sort of drip feeding information. But every time they do, they have everybody's attention. I tell you what happens every time they do is that an article gets posted about it, but because they've not released an image for it yet, that really <laughs> that ugly dev kit dev gets kit. put out. And there are definitely some less informed people out there who think mm. that that's what the PS5 is going to look like. Yeah, And that's probably quite damaging, actually, for 
you know, it's, it's only a small section of the potential audience, I think, actually look at that and think mm. that's the actual design. Well, they've shown but off the logo now. They have so now we get to see PS5 every time instead. So they might just put that in these articles instead. But there yeah. will definitely be a subsection of the potential audience that Sony should maybe start thinking about, like, putting out some kind of image for these news sites to use because yeah. people will be looking at that thinking that is ugly as hell. <laughs> Um, it's it's all very bizarre because Sony obviously first started talking about the PlayStation 5 in that Wired article, which everyone went crazy for. And it's like, that's very weird. Why are they doing it that way? Yeah. But it got a lot of attention. Uh, as people have pointed out, when they announced their logo, I think, they posted it on Instagram and it got uh, like a bajillion likes Even and stuff. Just... People, people are just insanely excited about this thing. Um, M- Microsoft showed off their box at the Game Awards, which is, again, quite an unconventional and weird place to Mm. do a console announcement. You would have thought they would have their own event like they did with the Xbox One. PlayStation, I imagine, very soon will show off the PS5, probably in the next couple of months, Mm -hmm. especially if they're going to start attending consumer shows to actually let people play it. Yeah. But in the meantime speculation is, is bound to be rampant about what's going on behind the scenes. Is everything okay? I think they just they just don't need to try as hard yeah they, i think they've got quite i don't it's again it's speculation we don't know if this is a strategy or not but if it is a strategy it appears to be paying off because everybody is talking about them yeah everybody's waiting and everybody's speculating whereas with xbox and this is you know this is absolutely not me bashing on xbox at all but we know what it is we've mm-hmm. seen it now and so nobody's really talking about it until they announce the price or perhaps even until E3 That's whereas true. Sony is dominating the conversation and has done ever since that Wired article because of the speculation and, yeah. the, and the anticipation yeah I yeah. think they'll have a fine launch we'll find out about some fun launch exclusives probably Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is a heavily rumoured one mm. um, and then as the year ramps up they'll continue to release information beyond their big announce event whenever that is Yeah, and I just think I I don't I'm not predicting who's going to do better or win here but I don't think there's anything to worry about with PlayStation. Both companies are taking vastly different approaches to this generation than the last generation. Yeah. And I think Xbox has definitely learned from the mistakes of the beginning of the last generation and Sony is just doing its own thing because it can afford to because yeah. they've done so well this generation. I don't think there's anything to worry about from either company, but it's it's very exciting and a bit stressful to watch it all unfold. Well, that's the thing. I think like everything that's happened in in the current generation is what has led to both behaviors from Sony and Microsoft at the moment. So Sony have done so well with the PS4 that mm. they do kind of think, well, we can just people are going to buy it, people are going to be interested. It's kind of it reminds me uh, in in a similar way of like to a certain extent, how uh, The Last of Us 2 is being treated in that, yeah, we've been given, uh, you know, a fair bit of information, but there's still, people are still constantly wanting more uh, Mm. in terms of, you know, pre-release stuff and seeing trailers and things. But Naughty Dog have known for a long time and have been like deliberately teasing the fact that we don't really have to push this game too much and people Mm. are just going to buy it. And in the same way, I think like Sony know that, when it finally comes to the time that they're going to do a, a big announcement, that's all that they need to do. You know, they don't have to keep like giving little little. You want a little, you want a little breadcrumb. You want a little bit extra. You want a bread PlayStation crumb. breadcrumb. Keep you going. No, no, they don't need to do that. Um, and likewise, you know, Microsoft didn't do so well, uh, relatively speaking, in uh, the current generation. They had a very bad start. Yeah, and they've def- definitely learned from that. Which, and I think, like one of the issues that we always bring up when people say, "What's better, PS4 or?" Uh, Xbox uh, would be the exclusives issue Mm. and lo and behold they're now talking about not having uh, their own exclusive games going forward or to to a certain extent games not exclusive to the new console yeah yeah Um, so first year so you know you kind of it's a it's a weird thing given that those are supposed to be the two major players. Uh, mm. Also, I guess Nintendo Switch as well. Well, Nintendo like Nintendo's not part of this conversation it's because got its own thing going Nintendo's on. just in a lane doing doing fantastically on its own. Yeah, right? it's 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 
it was barely part of the, either of the last two console cycles. I know the Wii U didn't quite do as well as everyone hoped, but mm. like Nintendo is it's just like half a step out of phase, isn't it, with everyone else? Yeah, but th- like they don't they don't need to be no, because yeah. they've got their they've got this huge audience of their own, and they're they're doing brilliantly on their exactly. Own so that, that's what I mean is, is it's a weird situation that we find ourselves in now that probably for the first time ever we're going into a new console generation with the two major players having such different strategies that like. The competition is isn't even going to be like for like. Like it's always been. Let's compare all the hardware. Okay, let's compare the ex- exclusive games. And and now in this first year of the next consoles, we've got PS5 presumably going to launch with a whole load of stuff that may well be only on the PS5 and not on the PS4 mm. uh, versus. Uh, uh, from Microsoft, a bunch of games that, yeah, all right, come out on the Series X, but if they're also going to be playable on the Xbox One, are they going to have to like temper the the quality and the content of well, those games? They'll be developing it for two systems, exactly. So, so yeah, they they will. They for will. The first year, Xbox are going to be bringing out stuff that's not exactly um, sort of next gen level content. Yeah. potentially, which is really strange as far as competition goes. This is Microsoft's interesting approach that that will be fascinating to watch unfold over the next generation, even over the next year, is mm-hmm. that they're really pushing this Games Pass thing. Yeah. And they're really pushing the backwards compatibility as well. And there's talk about potentially Microsoft getting Xbox on Switch and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. with their with their relationship with Nintendo, you know, just having their platform there where people could potentially stream games. Apparently their streaming service is X Cloud, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Apparently their streaming service is very impressive. Um so it it's it's gonna be interesting to see if if Microsoft themselves actually just start to they've got a physical box you can buy mm-hmm. that can run the games, but actually they're moving more towards Xbox as a, as a service, a service. Yeah, that's yeah. on lots of di- as many different things as they can get. So we may well just see Microsoft move away from consoles altogether towards the end of this generation. And Xbox is an app you can get on your PS5. Yeah. You know, who's, who's to say what's going to happen? So you got that. We uh, Ginny also asks about, getting very passionate about this, mm-hmm. just trying to talk fast so I don't forget what I'm trying to say. Ginny also talks about Xbox acquiring lots of studios. Xbox didn't really have many studios to begin with. Mm. So it's going to be interesting to see. I'm, I'm bummed out about some of them, like the um, uh, Obsidian, because I really like the Outer Worlds. Right. And I'd love to play the Outer Worlds too. But if Xbox move in the direction of, you can get the Xbox yeah. app on your PS5, then there's a good chance I'll be able to play it anyway, because mm-hmm. Microsoft is still making the money from it. Um and uh, PlayStation's got a huge stable of fantastic first-party developers, and uh, they've got great third-party relations and second-party relations as well. Uh, I know their their sort of agreement with Quantic Dream has come to an end now, but it's that sort of caliber of relationship that they can cultivate that you should not be worried about any new games or anything. If anything, the competition provided by Microsoft is a, is a good thing mm-hmm. because it will drive Sony to work harder and and, yeah. and pump more money into their exclusives. Um, there was one more thing I was going to say, and I think it has gone from my brain. Okay, and that's, well, that's a real shame. It may come to you. But I, I definitely, I agree with the idea that potentially we may see uh, Microsoft completely changing their, their whole strategy even more, uh, you know, as, as the years uh, go by. Um, because... When they showed off the Series X for the first time at the Game Awards, I looked at that and thought, well, when, when they were running the VT, I was thinking, okay, is is this going to be the next-gen thing or not? And then the longer it went on, I was like, uh, I'm, I don't know if that's the next Xbox or if that's just another step, you know, like the Xbox One S. Mm. I was like, what what is this? And then they said, it's called... The Series X, and I was like, okay, that also doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, they've not, they've not called it the Xbox Two. They've not called it the Seven Twenty. You know what? What is this thing? And it was even since then, even though they've actually showed now, uh, they they showed a, a physical thing after the VT. Yeah, I still haven't yet decided, and it, it's still unclear for everyone. I think whether this truly is the next gen Xbox or right. whether it's some sort of games console machine that's not synonymous with an xbox one but also not quite 
on the same rung as a PS5, intentionally so. It's a really strange thing, and I think we've got to just see where this goes. It supports the Xbox service, whatever yeah. that is. You know, you've got you, Xbox is now on PCs. You know, you've mm-hmm. got the Xbox app on there and stuff. So I do remember what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, in regards to sort of uh, Naughty Dog's approach to The Last of Us, and people are just going to buy it and so on. Yeah. I think this is very different from arrogant Sony, We've seen arrogance only before with the PS3 launch. You know, the PS2 sold 5 trillion units or whatever. Yeah. And they're just like, well, you g- the PS3, it'll kick your ass. Yeah. Buy it. and We can charge whatever we want. We've seen that. And we know that they daren't repeat that because they worked the, the whole way through the PS3 life cycle to claw back and eventually sell more than the Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. But there was, a, there was a huge turnaround in terms of their public perception and how they presented themselves to consumers. Yeah. And they sort of held that through most of the PS4 life cycle and have got sort of quieter towards the end. And now they're in a position where I don't think this is ne- necessarily belies arrogance mm. as as much as it it shows that they are in an extremely strong position in the industry and they just don't need to let everybody know exactly what's going on immediately. And they're slowly letting us know bits and pieces. And I I would like to think there's some kind of strategy in place. And I imagine there is. But I I feel like it's worth pointing out that this isn't... I I feel like this isn't Sony sort of resting on their laurels or being like, "Eh, well, when we announce it, you're all going to buy it anyway. I feel like this is a very deliberate move to have as many people talking about them as possible. Yeah, no, I mean, I I sort of paraphrased and I said it in that kind of tone, like, oh, well, people buy it. But the reason I I deliberately picked The Last of Us as an example is it's a similar thing in that I don't think Naughty Dog are arrogant people, an arrogant studio. They just know that largely speaking they have done very well over the past few years and they know that people are very much anticipating their next move um and they're just quietly confident and they think like we don't need to uh you know our our reputation is high enough that we don't need to keep reminding people that we exist you know like another studio or a you know if there was some uh fourth uh console developer out there Mm. uh that wasn't doing as well might need to stadia yeah, exactly. Stadia might need to keep deliberately making stories about themselves. Like, oh, we've announced this aspect of our hardware. You can to... charge your controller now exactly. when, it, when yeah. it's off. Just to keep themselves actually in the news. Yeah. But PlayStation, like Naughty Dog, don't really need to do that. And they're just yeah. thinking, okay, when the time comes, we'll announce it. People will be ready to listen to us. And that's Absolutely. that's fine. Yeah. Um, who's who's to say what's going to happen? We still don't really know what PlayStation is doing. We still don't really know what Microsoft's approach is. This weird, oh, I say weird, that sounds sort of derogatory. This this unusual approach to 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 a new generation of consoles and hardware or and and Xbox as a service or what have you. It it it's we're just about getting our heads around it and and I know that they haven't properly clarified yet, but it it's probably going to confuse consumers especially if the xbox series x is the first thing that they launch with and there's no other options and they don't clearly communicate that xbox is now just xbox Mm. whatever you buy is is just xbox yeah um so that that may hurt them in the long run playstation however have a have a very have a huge install base they've got a very strong uh, name because it just makes sense the playstation 5 that's the next one after yeah. the playstation 4 of course that makes sense so i'd be very surprised when it comes to the console launches if the playstation 5 doesn't do extraordinarily well mm-hmm. almost immediately but there's no telling we, do, we don't know what's going to happen i wouldn't be worried but i would be very interested to see what happens in the next sort of six months especially you know just past e3 because that's when it's really going to kick off yeah uh so there we go. I personally wouldn't worry about PlayStation. No, would you? no, I'm not worried about PlayStation, and I'm not worried about Xbox either. I no. think at first I thought, "What? This is a weird, like you say, it's a weird move." Uh, and I, I, almost in a derogatory way, I think at first I thought, "What are they doing now?" Look at that thing. That's but actually, silly. I think it's a really interesting move, and it could, you know, it could work really well for them. Um, yeah. And there's no reason that everyone has to play the game the same way if you'll pardon the pun playing the game but uh you know to 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 work in this industry in exactly the same way like we like you say nintendo have now proved that like we don't have to be bringing out a console at the same time as everyone else you know what not going to bring out our n64 at the same yeah. time as the ps1 we're mm-hmm. going to bring out a switch like two years ago because yeah. we want to and we're probably not going to bring out the next console for three four five years yeah. uh you know when the 
PS5 is already, you know, five years old or whatever. Yeah. They're, they're out of phase and they're doing fine with it. They're in their own lane. Exactly. Like moisturized. Yeah. Flourishing. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, Nintendo are doing. And there's no reason great. why Xbox can't say, we're not, we're not trying to do a PS5 direct um, no. rival. Uh, we're, we're doing our own thing. This isn't the eighth gen or whatever the yeah. hell it is currently. This is just... This is just how we're going to do it now. A new product that we've come up with. We're Nintendo. We're doing a Nintendo Direct next week. Surprise. Yeah. We're not coming to E3, but you want to hear about all our new games? Next week, watch it. And people do. Yeah. You can you can carve out your own niche. You don't have to stick to the status quo. And mm. it seems that neither company really are doing that yeah. this generation, which is really exciting. Well, there we go. That was a big discussion. Don't feel like we've had a discussion quite so big in a while. No. Peter, yes. if people wanted to let us know what they thought about all the things we've discussed today, where would they go to find us and how would they get in contact with us? I just turned the page to look at the notes, even though I know it all off my heart. <laughs> you can uh, see all of our content on youtube.com and twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump. We've got social media, uh, which is facebook and twitter.com forward slash team triple jump. I'd like to thank, by the way, talking of the, uh, the Twitch and the YouTube, when mm -hmm. we do streams, we've got some mods over there. No. Lord Brotovich and Cecil Prumps. Thanks. <gasps> Thank you. For stopping all the people who say things like poo. Yeah, stop the, the poo words. Stop it. Uh, we've got a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. We've got all kinds of rewards over there. Mm -hmm. You get worst games ever early. You can go into a special room in our Discord. That Discord is bit.ly forward slash team triple jump. And the mods over there are Jack and Joe and Crimson Dragonfly or mm. Drims and Dragonfly <laughs> as they've changed their name to. Yeah. Uh, if you want to get the uh, audio version of this podcast if you're watching on YouTube right now you can go to play.acast.com forward slash s forward slash triple jump. Yeah. And finally the website is triple j dot merp. Mm. If you go forward slash shop as well you can buy these fine shirts mm. that we're wearing on camera currently. There's a pocket peach shirt and there's a logo triple shirt. jump rising sun logo shirt. I think is what it's called. Mm. There we go. I need a new one of these. I've been wearing it for about a year. You yeah. know when you wear shirts for a while and it's not because you're a sweaty boy, it's because you wear deodorant and mm. so you slowly start to get deodorant marks under your arms. Right. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh -huh. I need a new one. I can't I can't stretch anymore because I can't, oh, cause can't show off marks. can't show off my deodorant stains. Mm. Uh, if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, you can do at that Peter Austin and at Ben Potter20 on Twitter at that Peter Austin and at confused underscore dude. We do lists every Tuesday and Thursdays. Streams every Monday, Tuesday and Thursday, Monday and Tuesday being on Twitch and the solo streams, and Thursday being on YouTube and the joint stream plays it. Mm. Worst games is fortnightly, Friday for patrons of a certain tier. That's just five dollars by the way patreon.com forward slash team triple jump and sunday for everybody else it's not a worse games week this week but it will be next week yes, it will. so get excited uh -huh. the podcast is every saturday and uh, we've got a load of shows we do as well that we sprinkle in between worst games ever weeks as and when they are available to go out mm -hmm. please leave a review on itunes or your platform of choice it helps something to do with al gore rhythms and we've just got time for peter's last sponsor hey have you got cysts? Yes. Do you don't want any more cysts? Do you want them to go away? Yes. Resident Evil 3, never cysts. From Umbrella Corp, no more cysts.com. Forward slash. Yes. That just, it's just a forward slash. Yes. Good. The end. The end. Bye. Bye. Bye.